Silica, short for silicon dioxide, is a mineral that's found in many naturally occurring materials like sand, soil, and stones. When we drill, cut, crush, or grind these materials, they can create a very fine dust known as respirable crystalline silica. Breathing in this dust can pose serious health risks that require special equipment to protect us, which we're going to talk about in this training. This training is crucial because, as construction workers, we're often exposed to silica dust, especially when working with concrete. Understanding how to limit exposure and protect ourselves can prevent serious, even fatal, health problems. OSHA has established rules that include limits on how much silica dust you can be exposed to, requirements for employers to limit dust, and the use of proper safety equipment. There are two types of silica, crystalline silica and amorphous silica. The difference lies in their atomic structure. Crystalline silica, which is the more harmful type, comes in several forms, including quartz, which is the most common. It's this crystalline silica that's often present in various construction materials. Amorphous silica is less harmful and is found in things like glass and certain types of plastic. There are many potential long-term health complications as a result of excessive silica exposure. This is because silica exposure's effects are considered cumulative. They can make it hard for you to breathe and carry on with your normal daily activities. Silica dust is most often generated through tasks like cutting, grinding, drilling, or crushing concrete, brick, or stone. Demolition work, sandblasting, and sweeping up dusty debris can also release silica dust into the air. There are various control measures for concrete work. We are going to focus on two in particular. One particularly effective type of dust collector is a vacuum equipped with a high-efficiency particulate air filter. They're specifically designed to deal with fine dust like silica. When used correctly with the appropriate attachment, they have strong suction and durable filters that won't get easily clogged. A HEPA filter can trap tiny particles like silica dust, which makes it a great tool for minimizing silica dust exposure. So these dust solutions are in place to protect your employees. It's a good thing for them, all right? It's real simple. You need a vac, an extractor to get the dust away. You need an adapter of some kind, depending upon, depending upon the type tool you're using. You'll need a bit if you're drilling holes, just to drill a hole. You'll need grinding wheels just to grind. But no matter what you're doing, you're going to need a tool, something to capture the dust, and then something to suck the dust away from the human. Real simple. Now, here's how it breaks down for you. When you are grinding, or when you are using a hammer to chip with, to demo with, you also need respiration. Respirators, okay? If you're inside, you always gotta have a respirator on. If you're doing those two things, grinding, or if you are chipping with a hammer. If you're outside, doing those two things, you don't need a respirator unless you're doing it for over four hours. Over four hours, you need a respirator, okay? Those are the table one regulations for OSHA. When you are drilling, you don't need a respirator at all. All you need is the hammer, the bit, the attachment, and that. Real simple. Make sense to everybody? You have multiple types of bags that are found inside of your vac. They're paper bags. Paper bags, the problem is they easily get punctured and dust goes everywhere. So that's not what people like to use. There are plastic bags. They're like a big uh, garbage bag that you buy someplace. They last 20 times as long as a paper bag. But what everybody wants to use is this fleece bag. This will capture all the dust particles and it's very durable. It doesn't just bust right over. So fleece bags. Then the vac itself, you gotta know when it's time to empty the vac, the guys are just going to rip the bag out, throw it in the barrel. Well, when they rip the bag out, dust goes everywhere. That does you no good. Did you know that the amount of crystalline silica dust that you're allowed to breathe in a day, this is how bad it is for you. Once it gets in your lungs, it never comes out. It's there for the rest of your life. It's just a matter of whether you get cancer from it or not. The amount that you can breathe in, to make this real simple, is if you took salt, like you use at your table, to salt your steaks with, and you took one simple grain of that salt, just visualize how small that is. Now cut that into 20 equal pieces. 
one twentieth of a grain of salt is all you're allowed to breathe in an eight-hour day. So just visualize, if you see a puff of dust, you've breathed a year's supply at that moment already. So knowing how to take the bags in and out of the bags is, 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 is paramount. Real simple. They attach inside here. They just go in over this little spout. It attaches. When you take it off, there's a little tab right here. You just pull that tab up, and it seals that shut. Take that bag and throw it in the barrel. Don't just take it and dump it in the barrel. If you do, you kind of it. So real easy. The second part to the system is that you need to know that they come with HEPA filters. HEPA filters. They're kept right in the back. They look like this. Okay? Every 15 seconds, as the guy's using this thing, it's going to reverse fire air up through it. You're going, what's going on here? That's working properly. It's blowing the air out of this filter without damaging the filter. Okay? You can, you can take compressed air periodically and blow this thing out. But when you do, you open up the, up the fibers in this filter and it's no longer temperated. So your manufacturers tell you don't do that. You can take it and just bang it on something and shake dust loose. But when you do, you open up the fibers on it it's no longer temperated. Okay? When you notice, because it self-cleans as you use it, once you notice this thing is getting full of dust, just change it. How do you change it? Like I say, you just flip this lever right here, it's exposed right there, wipe any dust that may be there, put your filter back in nice and tight, close it, you're ready to back to work. Always use the vacuum with the correct filter. The vacuum should have a HEPA filter for capturing fine silica dust. Regularly maintain and clean the vacuum to ensure it continues to work effectively. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for specific maintenance requirements. Empty the dust container regularly and replace the dust bag when full. Allowing dust to build up can reduce the vacuum's effectiveness. Use the right attachments for the job. For instance, use a dust shroud or hood when grinding, drilling, or cutting concrete. Safely store your assigned HEPA vacuum and attachments when not in use. Contact management if there are any issues with your equipment. While dust collection systems and HEPA vacuums can significantly reduce dust exposure, they should be used as part of a comprehensive approach to silica control. They are not a substitute for wearing your PPE. That means combining their use with other best practices, such as the wet method or the use of dust masks. Always vacuum instead of dry sweeping blowing dust into the air after concrete work. Avoiding eating, drinking, or smoking in dusty areas where food contamination may occur. Remember, take care of your equipment and it'll take care of you.